Hello, welcome to a new episode of Fighting with Moskovic. My name is Max Moskovic. Today I will be talking to Lieutenant Tim McMillan. And uh, yesterday he disclosed a very, very interesting thing. It looks like the Inspector General uh, of the DOD is now looking into the UAP task force and how the Pentagon is researching uh, the UAP phenomenon. And it looks like they're not very happy about it. So uh, basically now you have your Pentagon police on your ass and uh, Tim has a lot of interesting things to say about it. And we had a great conversation. You enjoy this episode. And by the way, if you like my content, uh, please subscribe. So let's, let's uh, start over a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sure, no problem. Uh, we, we can just pick it up with a short introduction and um, um, yeah. I spent the, the first half of my, my adult life, uh, about 17, 18 years, I was in law enforcement in the United right. States uh, near Savannah, Georgia, working um, as a criminal investigator, intelligence analyst, a uh, little bit of everything. And, and after taking early retirement from that, uh, I, I got into journalism, satisfying my kind of curiosity for solving things and bringing news to the world. Um, been doing that for a couple years before we founded uh, the debrief recently, which we, we focus primarily on science, technology, and defense news. You know, anything on the cutting edge, new, interesting, innovative technologies and in science that are coming out. Sure. And so, uh, you know, mostly reporting on national security, defense, uh, technology news. Um, and in amongst that, I, I found myself getting wrapped up into what has turned into a very pretty big story in the United States uh, and actually globally now, which was a couple of years ago, the Department of Defense decided, started talking about UFOs. Um, or as they, they call them, unidentified aerial phenomena. Uh, it's right. the, the new term. Um, and so I've been kind of chasing this story for the last couple of years, uh, you know, from the Department of Defense's side, from the government, you know, what are they doing with this? Why is this of interest to them? You know, what exactly is going on? <laughs> it's, it's, it, it definitely, I think when people hear the term UFO, it, it generates all these images of little green men and aliens and flying saucers. Uh, that, that doesn't seem, that's, that's not what I find our government's talking about. Uh, they're talking about unidentified objects that in some instances, you know, they are saying they can't figure out. They appear to be defying what's normal and they can't, it's not Russia, it's not China, and it's not them. Um, it's intriguing. And so it's, it continues to be a, a pretty intriguing mystery that's going on right now. Yeah. And, um, you know, we just talked about uh, what what drew you in, what what made you really want to pursue this specific subject, the UAP, the unidentified mm -hmm. uh, unidentified aerial phenomenon. In my background in law enforcement, I had a lot of connections with people in the Pentagon. I, you know, we worked domestic intelligence, and especially I was working, you know, during the time when the the war on terrorism was really going on, and so there was a lot of uh, sharing going on between the federal government and local law enforcement agencies like I work with. And so I, I knew a lot of people in this. And so when this became big news, uh, late 2017, early 2018 in the American press, you know, I would call, I would call people and be like, what's going on with this? Uh, you know, I think like anybody else, the idea of UFOs are interesting. <laughs> you know, it's intriguing. We, we've all seen movies. Uh, and I was surprised that, that people who I trusted, people who I've known for a long time, who, who are serious minded people said, you know, there's something to this. And so I, you know, I started digging into it and in terms of the information that was being shared by the, the press at the time, you know, American media uh, was really the only one covering it. Most, uh, most other global media markets were just ignoring it. Um, it was kind of silly, you know, it was drawing on little green men and hokey, you know, sci-fi yeah. movie thing. It wasn't being traded seriously. And, you know, I, I realized that we had some very serious individuals that were saying that these things were going on, you know, very serious. You know, people and who, we're, we're talking about uh, uh, Senator Harry Reid, uh, Mellon, Rubio, Elizondo. We're, we're talking about people who, like you said, Senator Harry Reid, former majority leader. Uh, so we're talking about in the highest, you know, short of the president, the highest elected leadership positions in, in the United States. Uh, you know, just recently, the former director of national intelligence, um, John Ratcliffe. Yeah. These are 
people in very high positions. And so, you know, I recognize there's kind of only a couple options here. Either these people who are in charge of, you know, very deadly weapons and weapons of war and make decisions that affect millions, if not billions of people around the world are totally crazy or there's something. And so I think that either one of those options, uh, that's very newsworthy. I think it's something the public needs to be aware of. And I think, uh, I, you know, I was frustrated because there wasn't enough, I'd say, good investigative journalism that was going into it. So I said, yeah, I'll throw my hat in the game and start digging into it. And so I've spent the last couple of years really digging into that, you know, trying to answer that question. Are these people crazy or is something really going on? OK, um, so so from a Dutch perspective, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm I was basically, I think, the only one really diving into uh, covering uh, the subject and especially in relation to the release of the footage uh, in 2017 by uh, the Pentagon mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, or, uh, you know, uh, people who were running ATIP at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so from a Dutch perspective, it, it, it's amazing to observe, uh, you know, it, it was covered though, you know, they, they did say mm -hmm. uh, on our news channels, look, they're, you know, disclosing there's UAPs, there's UFOs. And, you know, the Dutch people just were apathetic to it. You know, they just did not react. They don't know what to think, uh, which is a very, <laughs> which is a very human reflex because especially the very sober Dutch people, uh, they don't like the unknown stuff. They don't like to be, you know, insecure about, you know, whatever their life looks like right now, you know, because, you know, it's, it's determined, you know, you know, everything, you know, it's, is in a certain so this would mess a lot with everything we've known <laughs> for for centuries, thousands of years. So the Dutch, sure. so the Dutch choose to put their heads in the ground. They just don't want to hear anything about this scary stuff. And whenever uh, I report on it, they the you know the 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 reflex is kind of with a certain aggressiveness. You know, you know, you mm -hmm. how, how dare you even think this should is, is a thing, you know, this is paranormal bullshit. You cannot, but then, you know, I'm, you know, one of the people there, you know, they're disclosing this with, mm -hmm. for a reason. And this is like the top of the American government military, you know, that, what, what could be the motive to, you know, uh, spread uh, fairy tales, you know, that sure. there is, there is something going on here. So I have been talking to a lot of critics in Holland and one of them said there might be, and they, they dug deep to find this one. <laughs> uh, they, there might be a, um, uh, a thing, and it could be like a, 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 an a economic thing, you know? They're, they're investing into, into the STARS Academy, you know? It, it's so supposed to be something uh, about entertainment, and this is why, you know, because it's funded by Bigelow, it's funded, uh, you know, it's run, uh, you know, they're uh, supported by uh, Reed and Elizondo, I, I hear. Uh, but, you know, if something doesn't get any funding, you need to get funding somewhere, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so this is also something that is going on. And I think that touches ground with what you just dis uh, disclosed yesterday. You know, um, what is being investigated by who and what are their motives? Sure. Yeah. I, well, first of all, I'll address that because if you have that with the critics in terms of you know, this is a financial thing. You know, first of all, the, the To The Stars Academy ha has largely um, kind of fallen apart. Uh, Lou Elizondo has left that organization. Chris Mellon has left it. Um, I think that they're they're focusing more on entertainment. And so I say fall apart. Maybe that's not a good term, but but in, in terms of seeking money from the government, let's say, th there's really nothing there with that organization. In general, I think that that's a pretty simplistic argument. It, well, it, there's a lack of understanding of the Department of Defense. And people realized that if you wanted to make money <laughs> off the US government or frankly any government um, in the defense world, you're not gonna pick UFOs. And I think it, it's public information. You can, every every day at 5 p.m. that the Pentagon emails out or, or publicly list all the contracts that they've issued to different companies. If you look at that, <laughs> These are hundreds of millions, sometimes billions of dollars that are going for airplanes, ships, missiles. You don't need to create anything else. I mean, that's not and in the idea of UFOs, the, the, the kind of disposition that you said for the Dutch people. Uh, you know, I, I live in Germany now and that's 
you know, identical to the, the feelings here. And, and, you know, I would say that it's a, there's a lot more interest maybe in the United States, but there's still a, a huge segment of the population who's dismissive of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's money maker is what I'm getting at. You, you don't, I think that people don't realize that you'll hear a lot of critics say, Oh, well, this is about selling TV shows or anything. I can tell you, you know, I don't try to make money off of UFOs. Like I said, we at the debrief, we report on all sorts of stuff, but I do know people who, you know, primarily focus on UFOs, uh, whether it's doing films and everything, that's not their primary job. There's no money in this. <laughs> so that the idea that it's a moneymaker is, is, is not accurate in terms of the seriousness of it. Like you brought up what, what came out yesterday and what, what I reported yesterday uh, was really, really, you know, significant news. I think it's more significant than most people will appreciate and realize right now. And that was that the Department of Defense's Office of Inspector General announced that they were going to be uh, conducting a review or evaluation over how the Pentagon has been handling the subject. I right. think some people misinterpret that and be like, oh, see, it's all a big waste and fraud. That's what they're going to be looking at. And that's not that's not accurate. Um, you know, yeah, the, because you know, they, it, it looked like you know they 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 tried to discredit, uh, discredit uh, Mr. Elizondo, which was mm -hmm. quite sickening, you know, because you know, Senator Reid had to jump in and uh, you know confirm his part in ATIP, and uh, you know he wrote a, an official endorsement, <laughs> and I think there's a, a, a paper trail that can you know um, support that. Um, so. What's the panic about? Because we, to me, it's getting confusing now because we have this new UAP task force who are really underfunded. I think they have to do it in their spare time. It's like two people. But, you know, because people like you and me are making a lot of noise now, <laughs> uh, I think um, the, the government now is feeling pressed to, to really pursue checking out what, what is going on. So... What does this mean? The inspector general is now uh, being involved with, uh, you know, how this is being investigated. What are they now looking at how they investigate it or do they want to be uh, involved to thoroughly investigate the UAP phenomenon? Uh, the, the inspector general's office is like the police of the police. And they right. are the watchdog organization. They are extremely extremely powerful and short of like, you know, the president of the United States, they have power to interview and get to the bottom of anything. And, you know, they uncover corruption, all of this. So for them to step in, you know, this is significant. You can't run away from them. You know, reports that they issue can end careers. And if you are in a senior level position, you know, you don't have an option of ignoring them, this type of thing. If you want to have a career in the Department of Defense, um, and so what they're going to be doing, to the best of our knowledge, and I spoke to their public affairs, I spoke to the inspector general yesterday, and you know, they're, very, they're a very serious organization, down to the fact that you know, they told me, look, we're not gonna speculate where this is gonna go and what's gonna happen and what towards the end, but we're going to review everything, meaning wow. how the messaging is going out, how is the public affairs addressing this issue? How well is this topic being examined? Are they treating it seriously? Is there leadership within the Pentagon? And, and, and Lou Elizondo has brought this up amongst others that some people have acknowledged, yes, this stuff is real. Yes, this stuff is being captured on some of the most sophisticated systems in the world, but we believe it's demons or it's related to religious reasons. We're not gonna investigate it for that. Mm -hmm. And so they're gonna look into all of that. I mean, they, you, before it's all said and done, and I tell people this, this, this side of it means that things have gotten extremely serious. You know, shit just got real <laughs> is, is what <laughs> the best way to sum it up. Um, yeah. but this could last for years. They could interview hundreds of people. Um, it, it just depends on any way it goes. You could see journalists like yourself or others, possibly contacted by them because they want to know have you know if you've reached out to the Pentagon how have you been treated because there there is for me trying to go through the official channels and and follow policy of what they're supposed to do it's been very difficult you know they have yeah. ignored they've given contradictory statements like you mentioned they've given statements about uh, Lou Elizondo or his role that uh, you know 
are demonstrably false. I mean, some yeah. information, like you said, Senator Reed's letter that's been put out, there's other information that I was able to obtain just from investigating over the years that like anything else in journalism, you, you, you can, it's almost like spy game. So there's not everything that you can put out, but I can say that, you know, with just about absolute certainty that did absolutely, he was working these programs going back all the way to 2008. Uh, absolutely. These things have been going on and they weren't just water cooler groups. There was some official approval in it. Yeah. There were people involved in it. And so to come out later and say, no, nope, we don't know what you're talking about. Either somebody's lying. Yeah. <laughs> Something's going on. And I think that that's, uh, you know, I tell people, even if you're not interested in UFOs, you should be interested in that then, because that's not how effective governments are supposed to function in, in democratic societies, free nations. You're not you, you, you your government's not supposed to lie to you. No. And, and what, what uh, Mr. Elizondo uh, discloses to the general public is, uh, look, it doesn't have to be aliens. Uh, we could have a huge intelligence failure. And now that would be really, really troublesome because if you do have a failure like that, that means like whatever these things are, could be Russian, could be Chinese, could be any, uh, you know, rivalizing uh, country. Absolutely. Uh, so, you know, and, and I think this is what actually puts the, the, the most pressure on, on the Pentagon because that would mean a really embarrassing thing. <laughs> no, absolutely. And, and I think that that also, I hope that that puts it kind of in perspective to not just the United States and the Pentagon, but, but as you mentioned, other countries across the world, you know, NATO allies, you know, Western allies, uh, you know, again, living in Germany, there's certain things that you recognize that you don't see back in the States. So, you know, friends back in the States don't know, you know, I, I did a lot of, uh, I was paying a lot of attention to when Russia was building up on the borders you with Ukraine. And, yeah. um, you know, here we actually, you know, I'm here in Germany because my wife works for the Department of Defense. So we're here at an air base here. And so we knew that the threat level was raised. And, and for countries like Poland and, and, you know, any of anybody in Europe, these type of things are serious deals. People realize that wars are real. You know, people <laughs> in America don't realize that. And so the hey, look, we, 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 you know, in Holland, we have Russian planes uh, showing up uh, in our airspace. And they're not Absolutely. communicating and they show up in our seas too, you know? Absolutely. So they yeah. are doing, they're doing stuff, you know, we don't know what they're up to. <laughs> sure. Right. And so that's, the, yeah, yeah, the point is if we can't identify it, you know, the idea, of course, your enemies are going to attack you where you're at least looking. And so you just go, yeah, that's silly. We're not going to look there. No, we should need to be, because like you said, if, if what in the off chance that this was Russian, um, it, that could be a disaster. I mean, you don't know <laughs> what's going on. And so that's where I tell people is that it is a serious issue. You don't have to approach it like this is aliens, little green men. This is silly. Just recognize that, that you have professional people. You have high level government officials, at least acknowledging, yes, these things are happening. We're capturing them on sensor data systems. We're capturing on film. And that you know, wanting to figure out what that is, or what's going on, I, that should be something we can all get behind, I hope. <laughs> Look, Tim, I, I, I showed uh, a friend of mine who used to uh, uh, work as a Apache helicopter pilot for the Dutch uh, Air Force. Uh, he did two tours of Afghanistan, by the way, So and, and he was a captain. Uh, so I showed him, you know, the, 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 the footage everybody has seen, you know, the, the, one, the ones that uh, were released, uh, Go Fast, uh, the, the gimbal, uh, et cetera. And, you know, he can read the data, you know, on the, on the, the FLIR cam screen. And he says, whatever this thing is doing, I've never seen this before because it goes <laughs> really, really fast and it can maneuver in a way we definitely cannot. And he says, to, he said to me, we do not have this technology to my knowledge, not even in 500 years, you know? So if the Russians have this or the Chinese have this and they've been having this for a many decades because it has been happening since the 40s maybe earlier um we're you know something is going on you know we're kept whatever this is i he doesn't think this is this is man-made anyways and this is a professional uh, military pilot oh I, I and i agree with him and i think that you know well i agree with him that in the balance of probabilities um 
I don't think that they're Russian or Chinese. I, I also have absolutely zero reason to believe that they're U.S. or another Western ally. No. You don't engage in those types of things. And, and I think your, your pilot friend is, is accurate and he could probably expand on something that I've tried to tell people is that you, I think people look at those videos and they say, ah, oh, I can't really tell what it is. It's just a video is to understand that these are cameras. They're not, this is not like your GoPro camera, your cell phone camera that you're taking pictures while you're driving down a car. These camera systems are, are integrated with all sorts of sensors inside. These are weapons of war and, and in modern warfare, you know, they're high noon shootouts, meaning he who sees first wins. And so yeah. they're very integrated systems. It's not just a camera. There's radar. There's all sorts of different things. Some that we're aware of, some that are classified and, and you know, even down to the, the, the Apache system that, you, that the pilot friend you were speaking with highly integrated you know, where, where they can identify target, you know, the computers will pick out targets themselves for the pilots to look at. You know, it's, these are I not just, cameras. I know for a fact, you know, uh, whenever he was flying, um, the, the, the camera was attached to the helmet. So wherever he yes. would move his head to, you know, uh, and also mm -hmm. the gun was attached to the camera camera. So, mm -hmm. you know, they, whatever he was looking at, he could fire at it, you know? So th this is really high tech stuff. Absolutely. And, and I've, you know, spoken to other F-18 pilots, other fighter pilots, other, you know, like you said, rotor wing Apache or, or helicopter pilots, and all of them acknowledge that, A, you know, no, I can't tell you what this is just from the video, but B, if you've got the pilot saying that they couldn't identify whatever this is and it maneuvered the ways that it was, there's no reason not to believe them. I mean, and, and there's no reason that with these integrated systems, it, it's one thing to say you saw something that has all the telltale characteristics of a plane, but we couldn't tell whose plane it was, but we know it's a plane. That's one thing. Um, it's a whole nother when, especially if you look at the, the 2004 incident, which I, I think has, it, it made a big splash when it came out in 2017. It's kind of largely been forgotten to an extent. It's, it's gone to the background. But, but like your, your pilot friend said there, you know, those pilots, and I've had an opportunity to, to speak to several of them, three, three out of the four, um, you know, they described seeing something that looked like a, a Tic Tac candy, an egg shaped oval. Um, you know, we don't have anything like that. And I say we, now I'm not talking about the United States or Western allies, I'm talking about the world. If you look at, um, you know, if you were to look at some of the most sophisticated planes out there, whether it's the the US F-35 or the Raptor, yeah. the, Raptor the, the Euro TIE fighter, it's, it's important that people recognize these are planes. They, they fly on the exact same principle that the, the Wright brothers used going back to the early 20th century. It's lift, yeah, it's drag, systems. Flight. Yeah. Right. Wings. You need control surfaces. I mean, that's the thing. Unless you, you, you have a rotor like a helicopter, you need wings to you. Need, you need all these different things is how we achieve flight. When you're talking about something that looks like a little pill that's flying yeah. at high speed and sustaining itself. There's yeah, I, I agree with what, what, what your friend said. There's so many things there. It's not just that they have the ability to fly, but, you know, no one is reporting uh, sonic booms, meaning they're breaking the sound barrier. So they're yeah, which is a, blowing my mind. <laughs> right, it's not just one breakthrough that that has been achieved. We're talking multiple, you know, down to the energy source. I mean, people don't realize, you know, fighter planes. You know, there's only a limited amount of time they can be in the air, and especially yeah. the fact you move, the more fuel you're burning up before they have to in-flight refuel or land and refuel. How are these things sustaining themselves? Well, you know, the, the, the theory is, and I, I think it's a very plausible theory, is somehow they can manipulate gravity, you know, use gravity. And I, I think that that's, it's, it's definitely, I mean, I know that that's one of the leading theories. I think that there's a lot of good theories uh, that I've heard. And I think it boils down to either A, yeah, there, we don't know, and B, or they're achieving something by means that we haven't figured out. And, and I, I think that that's what's important. Even, you know, it, in these instances where you have people that are report seeing things that are moving or they're captured on radar, they're moving at hypersonic speed. So they're moving above Mach 5. Yeah. You know, we don't have the materials 
to do that consistently. That's why you see hypersonic missiles that blow up, but we don't have planes. Yeah, and I think humans are not built for that. So. <laughs> no, and that, exactly. The, you know, the, the, just the effects of the gravity, the G forces on the human body. I mean, there's just a lot of things that, that like I said, it's not one breakthrough. And so either all of these people, which now includes very high level defense officials are totally crazy. They're yeah. lying. They're hoaxing it. But then we also have to add in the just volumes of people that have seen them for decades and decades. You know, I, right. you know the Belgium wave is still one of the most famous worldwide waves that, that has never been explained. I think I've heard. You know, yeah, there was this hoax photo. Uh, there was a hoax it, photo. Yeah. And, and now, like, because of that one photo, like the whole thing was disqualified. <laughs> that, but the that happens a lot and i see that a lot and, yeah. and i think you 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 hit the nail on the head with the with kind of how people take this i think we have to accept the unknown's scary you know none of us like particularly the unknown whether it's you know going to a new place we've never been before or a job change or the idea that maybe there's something else here yeah there's something yeah. else around and so i think people have to you know they they have to try to make sense of that and and so by any means necessary and sometimes it's like you said it uh well you throw the baby out with the bathwater. so they say hold on, hold on, hold on no okay. problem i just gotta <clears throat> all right so <laughs> no it damn it <laughs> go away okay yes yeah, I mean, you 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 see a lot of things, and people bring up interesting theories, or they bring up, or, or like you said, the one hoax fo photo. Well, that doesn't discount what all the people saw, and, and I think that's where, from my background as as a police investigator, I won't say I'm in conflict, but I, I don't understand sometimes some of the the debunking, or you know, you say I'm not a scientist, and that's what's important to understand that in scientists you look at the hard data, all of that. I understand. Fair. Yeah. As, as an investigator, you take all the evidence. Eyewitness evidence is not discounted. You don't kick that out and go, oh, well, who knows what they saw? You you take all of that. If somebody, if you witness a crime, we're going to come talk to you. And what you have to say is going to be important. And and in fact, it is taken very significantly in, in criminal court. You know, people yeah. are, are go to prison <laughs> for eyewitness yeah. testimony. And so... Right. I certainly don't think that, that one hoax photo should outweigh yeah, like Tim, the number. Yeah, Tim, there's just, there's just one uh, problem I think uh, we are facing here, you know, in pursuit of the truth. Um, and it is, of course, we go on footage, uh, we go on eyewitnesses. But, you know, I understand some of these uh, things are, are uh, still secret and, uh, you know, classified. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it would help a lot if that could come along, if, if some data would come along with uh, with the footage, you know, either radar, satellite um, signals, whatever, you know, because you're talking about a um, a court case, yeah, you know that that would that that, that would really support the case, and um, you know, and I I feel like real scientists, uh, and I'm talking Holland and and I think the United States just refuse to even consider investigating what is going on you know even and and i was talking about uh, uh some of them uh, about this and i don't know what what is just the, the why are they so hell-bent on demonstratively not looking into this i think it's the same thing it's just you know they're afraid they're going to be you know uh ridiculed i think they're afraid they're going to be, uh, and I think they might be a bit scared too, because you know, it's going to fuck with everything they knew <laughs> and scientists don't like it when whatever, you know, that, you know, they're, they're, they're master of science. So whatever they know is the truth. And, you know, I'll explain this to you, young man, but whatever <laughs> something is not, not in their, uh, you know, their safe realm of, of knowledge, you know, they get really insecure and aggressive. <laughs> Sure. Yes. <laughs> no, that, that, that is true. And, and, you know, I think one of the things in, in some people's defense is there, there isn't really a good scientific discipline for examining this. And I, and I think that's where all, for all the reasons you just mentioned, but there's always a way out, no matter what your scientific background is, 
to kind of not answer this or, or dismiss it. You know, for example, I hear people, uh, you know, ask astronomers a lot or astrophysicists you know, about it. And yeah, I always go, like it. It, but their, their, their discipline is looking out in the stars. It's looking out through telescopes and everything. If we're talking about a flying craft that's in our atmosphere, that's not really their domain. You know, they don't study things inside yeah, but atmosphere. here's the thing. Here, they do spend a lot of time looking at the stars. That's true. Mm -hmm. You get to see shit. So now yep. they have to do a lot of brain gymnastics whenever they see something they cannot explain. And, you know, yeah, it's a piece of ice. Yeah, it's a rock. Maybe it's not, but I'm not going to tell anyone. <laughs> you know, <that's, laughs> right. Well, and that happens a lot. Of it. You know, there is, there's actually a lot of people uh, from the scientific and academic community that I've spoken to who privately are very interested, privately have even had their own sightings, their own experiences, but they recognize that it, it's just like you said, it's, it's a, it, it's a fatal thing to come out and, and talk about it publicly. And right. you know, that goes down to how the, you know, how science is performed with funding and their universities and their reputations are paramount. You know, that's the thing is how, how many times have you been cited in X number of journals and what have you done in research? And so, they're not willing to risk that, and, and that. And I and I do think, Tim, that uh, a lot of the scientists uh, issue an explanation for all the things they're not really sure about, right? So whenever they see something, they just categorize it. Uh, it must be this, but sure. you know, and and, and I think uh, this undermines like scientific curiosity. You should have and and pursue any possibility. This you know whatever you you face at that time. Sure. Well, I mean, and I think it's I think it would be wrong for anybody to look at any one of these. So let's take the videos that are released by the Pentagon and think that you can determine what that is, whether prosaic. So, oh, it's a bird or it's a plane, whatever, or it's an alien spacecraft. There's not enough information. I mean, you said that we need more data. We need more information. Yeah. There's not enough information to determine what that is. And I think people and have to settle on and, and we And we need more professionals willing to study this. You know, this Correct. is a problem. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You know, that, and that's, uh, that's always been the unfortunate side. Yeah. The, you know, we, we hear from debunkers or, or people who, you know, review videos kind of in their spare time, or maybe they, they make a, you know, it's a cottage industry out of it, but they're not Loki. fighter pilots. Right? They're not, they're not fighter <laughs> pilots. They're not FLIR operators. And, and so that's, I mean, that's one of the things that I try to do is talk to the people. I'm, I'm not an expert on, you know, on all of any of this stuff. So it's a, in, I do think, I do think people are in, instead of, you know, investigating what it is, they're bending backwards to, you know, uh, explain what it is, you know, and, and they come up with all kinds of bullshit, you know, sure. well, that's always, I mean, that's a, that's a problem in general with within in intelligence analysts, whether it's military, whether you're working counterterrorism or anything is that you already have a predetermined theory of what it is. So you're really just trying to fit that theory. And, and I think right. that, uh, you know, I think from a lot of scientists say, well, that's how science is done. You do a hypothesis, you determine, you know, is it, do you reject that hypothesis or do you accept it? But that's, you know, even in those instances or the hard sciences, um, there's plenty of studies that have shown that you can predict the outcome of a study based on a researcher's pre-existing bias or affiliation to what they believe. And so uh, there's biases that influence that. And when you're talking about something with low data, those biases just you know, become exponentially more significant. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, and that's, it, like I said, it, it's uncomfortable for a lot of people to come to that final conclusion to go, I don't know. <laughs> and, and that's whether you're a PhD scientist or you're just somebody interested in it. Um, I, that's the thing. I, I have no problem telling anybody from talking to plenty of people inside the, the, you know, the Pentagon who've looked at this formally to lots of different researchers who are serious, some who aren't serious. I can still tell you, I don't know. I don't know. I, I do believe there's something to it. I, I do believe that it, it's not fantasies. It's not delusions. But what it is, I don't know. Tim, a, a very personal question, but you know, as a as a as a, as a Jewish guy to a Jewish mm -hmm. guy, do you study Kabbalah? 
I have studied Kabbalah. I, you know, I grew up, uh, there was kind of a, there was some integration of Kabbalah and, and Jewish mysticism um, in, in, in my upbringing. And so, um, and you know, if anybody who's familiar with Kabbalistic thought, it's, you know, you, you think, uh, you're kind of trying to think a little bit more outside the box and not take the superficial understandings of things. And so, yeah, uh, yeah no, that, that is true. You pick that up. <laughs> I did because, you know, uh, I do think um, there is something to Kabbalah and, and what is going on right now. I don't say I don't think it's like a, like a religious thing or something, but but I do think, um, you know, the the way the universe works, you know, and, and basically what we as humans, very primitive humans are facing right now. You know, mm -hmm. there's so much more to, uh, you know, whatever this is, you know. Sure. I, I think that that any any of the the kind of ancient writings and everything, and I always and I always caution people because you know they have TV shows, ancient aliens and everything, and I always tell people you know where they say, well, the the what they called angels were actually aliens and everything, and I'm going, I, I don't know. You know, well, I, what, what I find interesting about Kabbalah is the the uh, exchange of energy. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm, sure. There, there's aspects of Kabbalah that, that are that are that are fascinating in general, I and mean, when you look at how this kind of uh, this this philosophical thought was was really adopted and you look at uh, especially the 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 focus on a lot of things uh, down to language and how language when you realize that the ancient you know, hebrew language was created and you're looking at this how, how words are the epidology of how words are created it's it's fascinating there you're talking about a time when we, you know when all of this is created, when people didn't have the internet and they didn't have TV. And so their ability to kind of really examine the more natural world around them that was not influenced yeah. by, by human beings was much more significant. And, and so I think there's some really interesting uh, philosophical insight that comes from that. And uh, absolutely, I, you know, that's why I encourage everybody, you, you you should be wanting to know what's on the leading edge of technology and innovation, but also learn about our history and past and, and kind of where, where some people may think it's a less scientific or more simplistic. But at the same time, I think you're, you're talking about it. People who are in incubators that could really examine the natural world a lot differently than we do now. And well, I, I do like the, 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 the tree of life metaphor you have, you know, you have mm -hmm. the roots down below and you have the, the branches uh, uh, above earth, you know, mm -hmm. but uh, the one cannot live without the other, you know, uh, but you know, what, whatever is under the ground, you cannot see, but it's so important uh, for the tree to keep up, to stay up, you know? Sure. Uh, well, I, uh, There's a lot of Kabbalistic thought that people don't recognize that, that is uh, let's say accepted in mainstream, for example, you know, the big bang. You know, I think a lot of yeah. physicists have the universe come in existence, the big bang and everything. Um, you know, that if you look at some of the Kabbalistic early teachings and you're talking about like the vessel and the bursting in the sparks, that's yeah. the big bang in different terms. And so I think it's, it's fascinating because it's, you know, there, I'm sure there's certain physicists and scientists who, who might read, uh, you know, Kabbalistic text and look at it and say, oh, well, you know, that's silly, the vessel bursting in the spark. And but you're like, well, that's what's the big bang? You know, it's just how you phrase it in different terms. I think it's fascinating to consider that either that thought influences how we think today or how did that thought come about? Right. And, and but what I find, what I find fascinating, it's, it's Kabbalah is all about balance, right? You know, sure. uh, and you know, Kabbalah doesn't pretend it, it has, you know, the truth, but it, it, mm -hmm. it gives you, uh, uh, let's say, uh, tools, to mm -hmm. look in a certain direction. And I do think uh, whatever is happening now and, and just being part of, of uh, maybe something more, uh, I think the exchange of energy, space and time, um, I, I find it very interesting to, you know, to, to, to look at the, the Kabbalistic philosophy on that. But that's, and I'm not even a religious guy. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, no, I, absolutely. But I think that you, you're, I think that you're you're right in bringing up this kind of depth of knowledge and how we examine it, because there is definitely, uh, you know, aspects that, that somebody who is, let's say, a quantum scientist or quantum physicist who yeah. might look at Kabbalistic thought and think it, oh, well, that's just 
silly fairy tales. But then if you ask them what you're working on and you look at like quantum mechanics at, at the, you know, the smallest level. And we recognize that, like you said, we still don't understand how our, our world functions, our universe, our, our existence functions that, you know, we understand it at this level, but when you get to the smallest level that where everything is made up of, it doesn't work the way we expect. And so it, it, how does it, how does it jive? And so I think that, you know, I've used this in, in plenty of conversations with people and it is, a, it's a, it's a Kabbalistic principle when it comes to UFOs. But, but I said, you know, we constantly, when you examine this topic, you come to this conclusion that's both yes and no. So you know, I use the example that let's say unidentified flying objects. Are these objects flying? Well, yes, because they're in the air. We see them. So they're flying. Um, and no, because they're not engaged in flight, how we define the principles of flight, lift, drag, propulsion, they're doing something else. Yeah. So are these flying? Yes and no. Well, you know, whenever you come to a conclusion and the answer is both yes and no, it means that the actual conclusion lies beyond the question. You're not asking the right question yet. And so what is the right question? I don't know. I don't know. But I yeah. think that we're, it's behind where we're asking right now. Yeah. And, and, and you know, th this is why I refer to the, the, the tree of life metaphor, because there's something underground you cannot see that uh, is so important to the balance we experience above ground. And sure. You know, maybe maybe this is a, a, a thing to, uh, you know, maybe take with us or something. Um, yeah. So, Tim, what do you what do you think is going to happen in the near future? What do you expect uh, from, uh, you know, this month? And um, because uh, I'm, I'm referring to it because Louis Elizondo, um, I think, twittered a, to me a very uh, interesting thing. And he said just left Congress, big things are coming. What do you think he's, ha uh, you know, uh, uh, meaning? I, I think, uh, and I don't know any, you know, things specifically in terms of what, uh, because I, I know, I, I remember what you were, um, what I believe you're referring to, because it was a week or two ago that, that uh, he said he was just leaving Washington, D.C. Um, you know, I don't know specifically. Uh, I will say, generally speaking, that where at times it seems like the Department of Defense has been disinterested or, you know, is trying to be dismissive of it, uh, that there are elected leadership, you know, at, at the highest levels of our you know, political parties on both sides, which is amazing considering the world is, is very divided amongst politics nowadays. But the fact that they can unify on this topic is amazing. Uh, I think that they're very interested in it. I think that they're very interested in it and they, and they do consider it a serious subject. And I think that they are not going to take the dismissal uh, at it. And so it, it will be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, and, and if I had to speculate, I'd say that's probably what, what Lou was referring to was, you know, he, he maybe has had some meetings some brief I, that, like I said, I, sometimes when you speculate, it becomes fact for people. So I don't want to lay that out there. Uh, I'm always cautious about that. Um, what will happen? I, I don't know. And, and that's the thing is I, I am very cautious about speculating. Um, I, I, you know, if you'd asked me three years ago, would we be where we are right now where the inspector general's office is looking into how the, the DOD is handling this topic, that there's, you know, elected leadership, uh, going on TV, discussing it. I'd have probably told you you were crazy. I wouldn't have thought that that was going to be the case. Look, um, I am excited for tonight. Yeah. Melon is going to be on Melon. Rogan. Yes, uh, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, Joe. Mel I, I heard about that a couple of days ago that he was going to be on that, so I was very excited, and I think uh, you know, that's when I, I'll, I'll definitely be eager to watch. You know, Melon. Uh, Melon's a very so sober guy and a very realistic guy. He's yeah. a smart guy, and, and um, his background is, you know, incredible. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but it's, uh, Tim, how cool would it be if Melon would uh, be, uh, accompanied by Reed and Elizondo and Rubio? <laughs> now that would be, that would be interesting. I would love <laughs> to see, I mean, that's the thing I would love to know what, uh, you know, people like Rubio and Mark Warner, uh, or even Reed, like, what have you seen? And that's the thing that, uh, you know, for me, it always, you, you go back and forth. It boggles the mind because 
you know, these are politicians. So they, you know, they don't want to do or say anything that's going to make them look crazy or hurt their chances of getting elected. And so they've definitely seen enough where they feel confident that uh, they're not going to look crazy and that they think it's serious. Uh, I'd love to know what they've, what they've been found, what they've been told. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm excited. Uh, you know, I, I like the way Rogan, uh, you know, treats uh, his interviews. It's not even an interview. He's just talking to you like, uh, like a dude. Right, just <laughs> chatting. It, it should be interesting. And, and Mellon, like I said, he's very, very savvy, very smart guy. And so it'll be interesting. Um, I, I'm sure we'll both be tuning in. I think like, a lot of people wanted to know what uh, was any I'm new information. Be watching. Yeah, yeah, and I, 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 I would really like Louis uh, Elizondo to go on Rogan because you know he he de deserves a platform like Rogan, you know, with millions and millions of uh, listeners and viewers, you know that would really. But I think there 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 might be a tactical uh, reason he's not yet on Rogan. I think there's a time and a place for him to 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 go on. Yeah, no, I think that would that would be. I would love to see that as well. I think, uh, especially the kind of laid back format that, like you described with Rogan, and that's the thing is, is all the times that I've spoken to Lou, um, you know, because we we don't we we come from similar but different backgrounds of, of you know military yeah. law enforcement, um, you know, I can relate to him very well, and it's interesting just the kind of normal Lou. And, and not trying to do a TV interview is uh, you, you get appreciation for he's just a guy, but he's a guy that's done I, a lot of when I when I interviewed uh, Mr. Elizondo, Louis, it was it was a really it was a fun conversation, you know, and, uh, sure. he, he, and he does like it when you make him a little bit uncomfortable, but he just, you know, <laughs> he's very <laughs> honest. He's very honest, uh, you know, whenever he can and can say something, but he's also very willing to really, uh, you know, uh, go on the on the right on the edge you know and 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 you know maybe say something and and he's i think he's like uh been saying a little bit more and more and more and more and i also think it's maybe a bit of a tactic to put some pressure on uh you know the pentagon sure yeah no i agree yeah, yeah. It, it's uh it'll be interesting yeah i think he he does he he says as much as he can and i think uh you know he he still has a security clearance so he still maintains the security clearance um if yeah. you ever law you know if the ever government ever got mad and took that away from him that would be interesting because then you know obviously he wouldn't sh i'm sure he wouldn't share anything that he couldn't that could get him in trouble and go to jail but he wouldn't have to worry about losing it anymore <laughs> and so there's no telling what he'd say right 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 so they have to keep him on the payroll huh? <laughs> <laughs> well if they were smart that would be what my thinking you know people ask why does he still have a security clearance i'm thinking well as long as they have that to dangle uh you know there's i mean that's they they created a kind of monster by not allowing it to be a special access program or to be classified because yeah. that means you can talk about it even right. though they don't want it talked about. And so I'm sure there's probably a lot of things that are unclassified that, that he probably hasn't shared, whether, you know, a, a, just out of honoring responsibilities to coworkers or colleagues, but you know, who knows? I, I it's another one. I'd, I'd love to see, I'm, I'm not unlike most people. I'd love to see all, all the data pictures and everything. I'd love to see what, what, you know, what makes people in these high level positions come out and say with so, so so much certainty it's interesting well you know i'm gonna be on the front row with my popcorn <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it, 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 I, absolutely uh, no I, I i'm i'm as eager to see as new stuff comes out as anybody else that's for sure yeah yeah well tim it was an honor talking to you um, no, was... i think we covered a lot yeah, no, no, it was a pleasure. Always, always good. And it's nice to, uh, it's nice to see other, not just American outlets covering it. I mean, that's what I tell people. I get... Look, I have an idea um, mm -hmm. because I am also a filmmaker. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so all of these uh, Zoom uh, interviews mm -hmm. I did and uh, with uh, some of the Dutch cases, I'm trying mm -hmm. to put together, you know, like a uh, timeline Mm -hmm. uh, suspense kind of a thing uh, on the road to disclosure and mm -hmm. you know it would be really cool if you know we're not that far I could drive to Germany and maybe do uh, you know uh, sure. a camera, like with a proper camera and you know talk to each other 
Sure. No, I would, I would love that. And, and uh, I think it'd be fun. I mean, that's one of the things I've lamented is, is that I'm like, I don't, whatever this is, I'm almost certain they don't rep, they don't recognize international borders and everything. So it's not an American issue. So I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's a lot of cases and a lot of sightings that are all across the world that we don't know about. Maybe some that are far more exciting, far more interesting. Oh, I'm um, looking at Russia, dude. I'm looking yeah. at Russia. I think that, that some shit went down there. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. That Russia's Russia's been a, a big interest of mine. It's a huge country and uh, all the way across. But I'm I'm very interested. Russia Russia is one that I absolutely would love to know. There, there's a, you know this footage online. Uh, I think from the late '60s. You know, you see the Russian forces go into the woods to uh, look up uh, a uh, crashed saucer or something. I hadn't seen that. That sounds interesting. <laughs> oh, check that out. It's, yeah, it's, uh, huh? yeah, yeah. I have to look that up. That's interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. There's no telling what's hiding behind the Kremlin there. That'd be very interesting. I, I would be interested. Uh, to know how they're responding to all the Department of Defense news. Well, I know for a fact there is a Russian billionaire really looking into the, the subject. And mm -hmm. I was planning on seeing if I can talk to the dude. I'm, I'm really curious. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. no, let, let me He's know. He's like the if Russian he, Bigelow. Yeah, let me know if that happens. I'd be very interested because that's, I think that's been a, um, a black hole in this topic is is hearing how russia Look, and there was something there was something in my interview with louis elizondo mm -hmm. uh, you know i i him and uh, he didn't really want to answer that if there was a, co a co corporation or a exchange of information with other countries like maybe the russians the french the british uh, and there was but he, he couldn't like um tell me which ones uh because some of them were actually adversary or how do you, but there's like rival yeah. right, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, but he did say later in the interview, he did say the Russians have their own encounters, which I didn't forget. So <laughs> I'm sure they do. And it wouldn't shock me. I think that that's um, I just interviewed a NASA astronaut too long ago and, and we didn't talk about UFOs. But but I did mention the fact that it's interesting that even even when America, the American government, the Russian government are kind of battling with each other. The space programs work together and they've worked together for a very, very long time. And, right. you know, he said, you know, when it's when you're facing new frontiers, um, people tend to get along. And so it wouldn't shock me if there are. Look, some look, if, if these things do the same, uh, we didn't even talk about the, 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 the nuclear weapons pattern we we're seeing worldwide. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, right, yeah. But, you know, I can imagine and this is just me. Uh, mm -hmm. that the Russians or the Americans would call each other, look, I don't want to call you, but are these things showing up at your nuclear weapons uh, too, you know? And they would be like, fuck yeah, they do. What right. the hell is that? Let's look into this together, you know? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, and, and you would, yeah, you, and you would want to make sure that you said, look, it's not us, you know, because you don't want to trigger some type of... Right. Cop. You would want to make sure. So I would imagine there would be that. And well, um, Elizondo, Elizondo used this as a, yeah, an example. Like, for example, you know, these, if these things interfere with your nuclear weapons, whatever. When look, when a UAP shows up in Pakistan and disables their their nukes, they might think it's India, and you know, correct. look at they look at it as a, like a declaration of war or something. Which and Absolutely. then we're in trouble because then we're in a nuclear war mess absolutely well and that it was it 2016 i'd have to look but you know that what, what recently there's been reported that 2019 for the the u.s navy with these quote mystery drones they're flying over the warships uh, right. you know the same thing happened in france and belgium in 2016. oh yeah, the, right. what wait what <laughs> yeah uh, I'm, I'm almost positive it's 2015 and 16. Yeah, in particular, France, uh, multiple. Yeah, I, I can email you the information. So please, you know, like 20 nuclear sites across France had mystery drones that were that penetrated over nuclear sites in France simultaneously. So you had them, you know, all in one night, you would have nuclear sites hundreds of miles apart from each other that had these, quote, drones um yeah i haven't had a chance to really dig into it deep 
all the news stories call them drones, but nobody explains what they look like. And so uh, the only witness account I could find in a news report was it just said that they were, um, uh, you know, they, they were like professional drones or something. They, they weren't like your regular little quadcopter. But I'd be interested. I mean, you know, who it brings you to the question, well, who who was that? <laughs> if that happened, if that happened in France and in Belgium, it happened in Holland too, I'm sure. I'm oh, I, yeah. And there may be reports. I just remember France was the first one that I got, but I I can email you some news stories. If you yeah, if you even, you know, Google search uh mystery drones, nuclear sites, France. Oh, um, man. I'm so should, going bulls deep. Yeah, into it. it was maybe uh fall of I think 2015 into January, February, 2016, maybe. I don't even think the Dutch news covered that. Yeah, no. I mean, it was, and, and again, it's one of these things where you go, well, who is it? So even if you don't believe it's aliens, even if you think it's just drones, who who the hell is flying drones over nuclear site? That's a big deal. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, no, I, I yeah. I'll 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 email you and touch base with you on that because it would be nice. Um, it'd be nice uh, to have some help out on yeah. this on on my time zone in with some of this stuff. Well, I can, I, you know, like, like my uh, my military buddies, you know, they do a lot mm -hmm. of um, you know exercises with the Belgians or the French, the Germans sure. actually. I think mm -hmm. you know our tanks are based in your country, some weird, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, <laughs> let, let's let's see what they ex if there's some sort of uh, you know. Oral explanation on uh, sure oral oral story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, sure. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll be happy to share anything I can. It'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah. Likewise, I'm going to share it with you mm -hmm. if I find out something. Great, Tim, my buddy. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you. Anytime. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to stay in touch. If you enjoyed this episode of Fighting with Muskreach, please subscribe to my channel so I can keep on creating free content just for you.